What's up, people? So it's my soapbox Wednesday. No, I do not dedicate a specific day for my soapbox, but I just do it when I have the time and the energy to do it. And I just so happened to get home at a decent hour tonight that I figured I would do this. Now I've been requested to do this particular live by a few people in the past couple weeks, actually. And it's in reference to the relationship that I have with my husband, John Zacoris. What's up, Jess? Hi, Mark. Hi, Ricky. So I have been requested to kind of share, I guess, what the secret is, the secret sauce for me and John's relationship. Because we work together every single day, side by side, literally, our desks are side by side. And we work together every single day of the entire year. Not only do we work together every single day of the entire year, but we also hang out when we're not working together. Okay. So most people can't do that. You know, you can't work with your significant other and also hang out with them outside of work and not drive each other absolutely insane. There, a lot of people will ask us too. They ask us, how do you guys do it? I mean, how do you guys do this? It's just, I, I don't understand. How, how do you guys do it? So Granted, I'll be totally honest with you, a little bit has to do with the fact that, yes, Kenneth, we are best friends, okay? And we've been best friends since day one. Now, I've been with John since I was 20, I think I was 21, turning 22. And I'm now, I don't know, I forget. No, I'm kidding. I'm 33, I think. I was born in 86. But anyways, you guys can do the math later. Who cares about what age I am? Um, but there is a method to this. To yeah, There is definitely a method to this. There's a couple different things that I can tell you guys as far as like what to do and what not to do, whether you work with your significant other or not, just to have a, like a successful relationship. Because me and John do have a very, very good relationship. Okay. I will say that I, I, I give us props and we don't talk about it all the time. People ask us all the time and we're always like, yeah, 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 whatever. And we just kind of brush it off. But there is definitely a method and there's like a, there's, there's a little, you know, a little equation behind things. Okay. So there is one thing we have been doing. What's up guys? Hi, Connie. There is one thing we have been doing for 11 years. Okay. Now this sounds absolutely insane, guys. I know I'm crazy. He's crazy. We have done super crazy things. Okay. But one thing we have done is we have went to the movie theaters every single Thursday for the past 11 years. Now, why do we go to the movie theaters? Number one, we love movies. Who doesn't like movies, right? I mean, we're movie buffs. I like to see movies. We see them when they drop. It's fun. It's great. Now, as we opened the business, it was this particular time that it was the only time we couldn't open our phone because it's rude. <laughs> it's rude to open your phone or it's kind of shitty to leave the movie theater and miss a part of the movie because you had to take a call. So it's a dedicated time frame where we are forced to put away our phones. We get to sit next to each other, have some slushies, eat some popcorn, nachos, maybe a hot dog. Me, I eat a hot dog, not John. But, you know, we get to have this time together where we're together and we get to watch this movie and enjoy each other's time. That's really important. We don't skip it for anything. We always go to the movies. I want to say maybe in 11 years, we've missed the movie theater for probably, and this is every Thursday, I want to say we've missed the movies maybe a total of 10 times, but it was either like an, an emergency or some huge event that we had going on. But even when we had an event in like a different state or we went somewhere on vacation or we went to Orlando, we would still go see a movie. Even if it was like a midnight movie, we would still go see a movie. That's just what we did, right? Now you guys also have to remember things like this and these type of relationships don't just magically like happen overnight. Okay. Me and John have been together a long time. You learn each other over time frames, and it's important to communicate with each other. Communication is key. If you're mad about something, tell them I'm upset about this. Don't do this. Sometimes you got to kind of work on that. You know, me and John have been together for a long time. So even in the beginning, you know, I'm married to a super alpha Greek male. Okay. Guys, he's a Greek alpha male. You guys have no idea what it's like being married to a Greek alpha male and me coming in as a female being an alpha female. 
kind of butt heads a little bit, okay? So there's gotta be some common grounds. You gotta find out like your 50-50 split and what's gonna make that person happy and what your common grounds are and how you're gonna communicate with this person. So there's definitely some things that you just don't do and some things you do do. I want everybody to know, me and John have been through a lot. Like, you know, even in the beginning, we worked our day jobs, but we also worked these little side things in the nightclub industry. And you guys have no idea what it's like to be a couple. Actually, there's some of you guys and actually some people that are on this feed right this very second that do know what it's like to be in the nightclub industry and have your significant other there and have to deal with other people that are around you that might be hitting on your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whatever, whatever. So then you have to deal with it. And me, I'm a very jealous individual. That's just how I was built for John in specific. Maybe not all of my exes because I wasn't built that way. But for John, it's become very special jealousy for me. That's just how I am. But we've learned each other in that aspect and you learn to respect each other. So having to work together every day, going back to that, working together side by side every single day, you have to remember to respect each other's opinions. We don't always agree on everything. Do we agree on most? Yeah, we do. But we don't always agree on everything. Now, you can't have a blowout argument every time you don't agree on something. You got to pick and choose your battles. Now, that's also taken us time to pick and choose which battles we're going to fight about because it's... It's very extensive <laughs> to have to fight. What's up, Rodzilla? Hey, Jody. So you have to pick and choose your battles about what you're going to do. But there's a couple do's and don'ts that I do want to share with you guys that me and John have implemented over the years. So one thing I will say, okay, is never, ever, ever, never, I don't care how pissed off you are. I don't care what your man has done to you. I don't care what your wife has done to you. Do not go to bed mad at each other. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Even if you're still pissed off and you haven't made up because nobody has said sorry, you still give them a kiss, tell them you love them, good night, I'll talk to you in the morning. Okay? You don't have to cuddle. Doesn't have to be sweet. Just don't go to bed angry. That Don't have that moment where you're like, hey, just want to let you know, I do love you. We can talk about this tomorrow. So me and John's fights, if we ever do have a fight, which is very seldom, thank God, let me knock on something for that. It doesn't last very long, okay, because we communicate with each other. You guys have to remember that's things that have built up over the years. We've built that communication with one another. And it's taken a lot of like, you know, going back and forth with each other. Of what What's going to work and what's not going to work? So everybody's different, okay? And everybody always asks like, what's this special sauce? You know, this is like a special sauce that's been created over a period of 11 years, okay? Now, yes, I'm, I'm lucky because I found somebody that's like the guy version of me. And of course, I love myself. I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> I do love myself, but not like that. But I mean, it's great. Hi, Uncle Chuck. I miss you. I love you. Um, but it's, you know, a lot of people grew up back in the day just correct me if I'm wrong out there, guys. Everybody back in the day, if your parents were divorced, it was like an anomaly. You know what I mean? It was not normal. And so if your parents got divorced, it was, why are your parents divorced? What's wrong with your family? I mean, that's what it was back then. Now, everybody's parents are divorced. They've been remarried 10 times and they don't even try and that's what the problem is, is that they don't try. You don't try to work it out. You don't try to sit down and talk it out. You don't try. People don't try. And I think it's because it's become so normal for people not to try that they just don't. And it's normal now. And now all the parents are all broken up. Everybody has stepdads and stepmoms. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But, uh, you know, me and him, we do have these core values that when we did get together, we were like, listen, if we're going to have a family, we want to make sure that our son, if we have another child, our children grow up like we grew up. And we did not come from a household of parents that were divorced. His parents were married until he was 18. And believe it or not, my parents were married till I was 18. So it's crazy. Maybe it was 18 or 21. I can't remember. But it's kind of crazy. We want to make sure we instill the same things, right? So... Make sure you don't go to mad, like don't go to bed mad at each other. That's a no no, a big no no. Communicate with each other. Be up straight, like upfront with 
with each other. Trust each other. Don't lie to each other, okay? If you do happen to lie, can you please come clean about it at some point? Because eventually it's, it's, it's going to surface, right? So that's that. And then the other thing is make sure that you guys do something that you guys like to do together. Now, I know me and John, we catch so much shit for this. I'm going to bring it up because I'm a real person and I tell you guys the real shit. I don't ever like filter any of this. But, you know, we do things that we like to do. Now, me and John, we like music and we like to dance. And we don't like to go do drugs and dance till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but we, I mean, we used to go to Winter Music Conference when we were younger, listen to house music. We like to dance. It's, we like listening to music. It's, it's like an outlet for us. Okay. So we both like listening to music and we both like to dance. So why not go somewhere, whether it's a nightclub, a lounge, a salsa place, whatever, and go with just me and him. There's no Peter or anything, no other friends. And it's just us. We happen to run into people, which we always do. Then that's what it is. But we're doing it together. And it's a moment that we get to have it with each other. So you guys have to remember, like, what is it that you guys like to do with each other? And then apply it. Like, actually do it. And it's not just like a date night here and there. It, that's not the same thing. Hi, babe. I'm talking about you. Like, my whole soapbox is just about you. <laughs> So anyways, it's not just a date night. It's something you guys do all the time, okay? For me and John in specific, that's going out, having a good time. We don't have to have drugs or alcohol involved, and we enjoy each other's time. We like to dance with each other. We like to listen to music. It's an outlet for us. Some people, they go to the gym together. John, he likes to go to the gym. I do not like to go to the gym. These are two things that we do not see eye to eye on for the simple fact that I just don't like working out. And that's like one of his passions. So you respect that, okay? I'm gonna give you a pure example of how you respect your significant other's like hobbies and what they like to do, right? So John, he likes to work out, right? He like, if, if I, he had it his way, he'd work out every single day and he'd probably get in at like a two hour workout. It is nearly impossible, and I know we make it look so easy on the social media, but those of you that actually know us in person and see us in person, even on a day-to-day -day basis, hi, Michi, hi, Tina, you guys have no idea how hard it really is to try to fit in everything. Like, okay, my hair, okay? I've been trying to get my hair done which is not done. Thank you, Beth. Um, but anyways, I've been trying to get my hair done for like weeks now. And it's, you start becoming a little resentful in general when you want to do something or need to do something and you can't do it because you're too busy doing other things. Now, not to say that we need to do these other things because we have to do it, but you start to become a little resentful about it. So even if it's John, let's say, and he wants to go work out, it's like, hey, I want to go get a workout in. Can I get a workout in? So you have to think about your significant other, what they're wanting, what they like to do, and try to accommodate each other, okay? And say, okay, you have to be mindful of it. Let's just put it like that. Be mindful of what's going on with your significant other so that way you can make them happy. Don't be selfish. Don't always think about yourself because it doesn't ever get you anywhere. That's not how you're going to be successful in a relationship. That's like huge. All right. And then the other thing is to make sure that you guys are communicating with each other. So for instance, if there's something that bo that's bothering me about John that he's doing or he has done, you do not. This is like a golden rule. All right, guys and girls. You do not call out your significant other in front of other people. You don't do it. It's disrespectful. They will be pissed off at you. And you're going to have to deal with it at some point. I don't know anybody that's going to be okay with being called out <laughs> in front of everybody. I don't care if you're a guy or a girl. If you're pissed off about something, the best thing to do, and me and John, we I'm telling you, we've like mastered this, Okay. The best thing to do is to wait until you guys are together and then you can discuss it and say, hey, listen, you said this, this, and that earlier. I didn't like it. Please don't do it again. Or you did this earlier. 
I didn't appreciate it. Please don't do it again. This works both ways, guys and girls, okay? So that's a huge thing to do as well. Make sure that you apply this. This is like great God-given information I'm giving you that you can apply to have a successful marriage and relationship. So make sure you, you do that, okay? The other thing is, is and this is like, you got to remember, <laughs> you got to do stuff like this. When you're with your significant other, all right, it is important. And these are things that you cannot like teach somebody. I am a very loyal individual, okay? Loyal as loyal comes. It doesn't come any loyal, like more loyal than I come. But you betray my trust. I'll probably never, ever, 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 ever trust you again. You gain my loyalty. You have me loyal to you forever, okay? That's like a gift. So the thing with that is, is that if you're with your significant other, okay, and let's say that they do something and they do something that is not right, okay? Let's just say that it's not right what they did. Like, it's not right that you did this. Or maybe you should have handled this a little bit differently. You know what you do? You back up your significant other at that time, and then you can discuss it later. So, for instance, say something goes down, and you're like, man, maybe you shouldn't have handled it that way. Or you... I don't agree with you. No, 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 no. You always agree with them, okay? Even if you don't agree with them, you agree with them at that moment. Trust me, I promise. I promise, guys. <laughs> you agree with them at that moment. And then later, when you get in the car and you're driving home, then you can tell them, hey, listen, just so you know, like earlier when this and this went down, I didn't agree with that. I don't think that was right. This is why I don't think that was right. You guys might see eye to eye. You might not. You know what I mean? But you have to back each other up. Don't talk shit about your significant other to other people. That doesn't make you look good. Okay? I understand that there'll be points where you're like upset and you might want to like vent to somebody about something or your significant other has done something that you don't like and you're trying to vent to a friend, a family member, a mom, a dad, a sister, a brother, uh, whoever. Okay? But what happens is, is that you and your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, wife, husband, whatever, you guys make up and everything's perfect. The people you told all this shit to, now they're looking at you like, why would you go back? Let's just say, I'm not even talking about like a cheating situation. I'm just talking about maybe treating you bad or maybe talking to you a certain way, whatever. Maybe it was in a, it was in the moment. They didn't mean it, right? right? They didn't mean it. You go and tell all your friends about it and now you look like the asshole. That doesn't work out very well. I promise. Then people are like, why are you so stupid to go back with this guy? It's because I love him. Oh, okay. Well, you're still stupid. This is what happens, guys. <laughs> Don't. Exactly, Dawn. This is what I'm saying. But this is the truth. I am like literally laying this out for you and mapping it out of like your do's and your don'ts. Don't do that. I understand that you want to vent and you want to tell people about it. I get it. Hi, Kip. Long time to talk. What up, Suzanne? I know you want to vent about it. But guys, just maybe try to like bite your tongue, not talk about it. Because what happens is not only are you telling other people your business that probably shouldn't be out there, what stays in the house what happens in the house stays in the house. That's what my parents used to tell me. So what happens in this under this roof stays inside this roof. Well, that embedded in my head. And now I'm like, hey, listen, whatever happens in this house stays in this house. That's how it should be. It really should be that way. So if you are telling someone about it just because you're upset and you're venting, I get it. But what's going to happen is, is they might get in your ear about something that you normally, I mean, maybe it is something you need to hear. I don't know. But maybe it's something you don't need to hear and then you take it out on your significant other it just it can snowball into something that it really isn't and it makes your relationship harder to deal with because now you have this third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth party that's involved and they're trying to tell you how to run your relationship when they don't even have their own man sitting at the house or they don't have a wife sitting at the house right Let's take, let's take relationship advice from somebody that's not married or doesn't have a boyfriend or girlfriend for an extended period of time. So guys, there are definitely do's and don'ts to this. Me and John were lucky. He is my best friend. 
I love him to death and we respect each other and that's huge. You make time for everything that you could possibly make time for and it's really, really hard for us to make time for things because constantly there's always something that needs to be done. Whether it's a text message that needs to be addressed, an email that needs to be addressed, something that needs to be addressed on social media, advertising needs to be done, bills that need to be paid, and they don't stop. Like, they're not, like, letting up. It doesn't matter how many people I hire. It's still, like, the same amount of work every day. I don't know how this is, but it, it just is. <laughs> it's the same amount of work regardless of what you do. So make the time to do it. You know, make the time for your kids. Make the time for your husband. And you know what? I'm going to tell you the best advice I can tell you before I hit the end, like, the end button on here. Best advice I can tell you, you must. Be sexually active with your significant other at least, guys, okay? At minimum, minimum, you must be sexually active with your significant other at least three times a week. Now, me and John, were different. It's almost like every day. It is every day, okay? You have to keep each other happy, have physical contact. It's so important. You guys have no idea. You must have that in your relationship. So if you're not doing that and you're only having sexual contact with each other once a week or once a month, it's probably not going to turn out so well. Because at some point, what are you guys going to start looking somewhere else? That's what happens. I mean, even if you're not into it, they're into it, vice versa. So make sure that you guys are physically attracted to each other enough to want to have some sort of physical contact, at least minimum three times per week. Three times per week is like your God-given number. Do not do this once a month. I've heard people only having any sort of sexual encounter with their significant other once a month. And I'm like, oh, well, what happens the other 29 days of the month? It's not good. Makes you think, you know, it's, 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 okay, so, you know, I mean, we're totally not normal, so we can't compare ourselves to everybody else, but I am telling you that is the minimum, okay? Three times per week. Make sure that you make that happen, because if not, people start drifting. You don't want them to drift, and it's hard to keep things interesting, especially when you're freaking working 19 hours a day and you're tired, okay? So, but you got to make it happen. I know you guys can make this happen. I am, like I said, I am mapping it out for you guys as to what you do and what you do not do in relationships. So, these are just some of the little bit of things that are going to help you in a relationship to keep it going, keep your significant other happy, and make sure that you communicate with each other. And you got to have some ground rules here, okay? Got to have some ground rules. Five times, Craig. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to say no to that because my number is seven times per week. So, you know, I just say I'm trying to, like, have some happy medium here because I do know how many times other people have some sort of sexual encounter throughout the month. And it's a little crazy. And you wonder why your man is running off somewhere else. Guys, suck it up. Make it happen. Please enjoy it. Don't. Don't drag yourself into it either. The side note to that, to all of that that I just said, is to make sure that your hormones are checked. And it's not because we own Titan Medical Center and I'm saying this as an advertisement. I'm really not. I am telling you. I've been through it. John had low testosterone at a super, super young age. I literally thought it was me that was like, I don't know. I guess he just, he wasn't into it. He didn't want to do anything. He didn't want to do anything with me. He didn't want to do anything ever. I'm like, awesome. So I'm like, this is great. It's me. I must be doing something wrong. No, actually, your testosterone is like non-existent. And so you have zero drive motivation, no libido. That's the problem. Okay? Then you have me, on the other hand, two years later, come to realize that my estrogen levels are through the roof. Well, of course, you know, John drops a penny and I'm like, boo, start crying about something. Or, you know, something happens and I flip out on him. I swear I thought I was bipolar for a very, very short period of time. But I did think for a moment, I'm like, maybe I am bipolar. <laughs> it really wasn't. It was a matter of getting my hormones checked. So sometimes your hormones are off. You're not going to have a libido. You're not going to have any motivation. You're not going to have any energy. You're not going to have any drive. And it is eventually going to affect not just your work life and your sex life and your home life and your relationship 
and your friendships and your social life. It's going to affect everything. So it's important you have all that stuff in check as well. Super duper important. Okay. The other thing I'm going to leave you guys on is if you really love your husband and you really love your boyfriend or your wife or whatever it is, make sure when other women or men walk by, don't break your neck looking at them because it's super disrespectful. Just don't do it. It doesn't make your wife or your husband or whoever feel good about themselves when you're breaking your neck to go look at somebody else that's walking by. Yeah, of course, there's other people that look decent. Okay, cool. We all know that there's other people that look good. Great. That, that person looks great. But guys, respect your significant other. Don't be an asshole. That's how I'm going to leave this. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's my couple tips for relationship thoughts. I've been asked about it a few times in the past couple weeks. So I figured I'd lay out just a few like major things that you should and should not do. And I'm going to go and save the animals because they seem to not be getting along right now. All right, guys, gotta go. <laughs>